Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher and welcome to All About Canadian Books. This week, we're taking a peek at the Canadian book industry. But before I introduce our guest, if you love books and the stories behind them, please subscribe to my channel. Interviews are posted bi-weekly and you don't want to miss out. My guest today is Noelle Allen. She's the owner and publisher of Woolsack and Wynn, which is an award-winning literary press based in Hamilton, Ontario. She is also the past chair of the literary press group, Gritlet, Hamilton's Readers and Writers Festival, and of the Hamilton Arts Council Literary Advisory Committee, where she managed the Hamilton Literary Awards. Currently, Noelle is also the essay editor for the Hamilton Review of Books and manages the literary programming for Supercrawl, which is Hamilton's largest outdoor arts festival. You are busy, busy, busy. <laughs> I, I hear a lot of Hamilton when you do that. I'm like, it's all pretty Hamilton oriented. Though. Yeah. And how is the Humidex in Hamilton today? How, how is the what? The Humidex in Hamilton today. Let's let's not talk about that. <laughs> it's it's kind of like melting levels here. <laughs> yeah. Well, Noelle, welcome to the program. I'm thrilled to have you here. And just wondering if you could let us know what drew you into the book industry. Well, to be honest, I thought early on, like many people do, that what I really wanted to do was write books. I was going to write books. I don't like being by myself. And I found that what I wanted in the end was not actually writing the book. I just wanted to have a book. And the best way to do that is to make books. <laughs> yeah. I just loved having books around me mm. and reading books and being surrounded by the written words. So I figured since writing was just way too much work, I would go into publishing. <laughs> and how many years have you been in publishing now? Oh, I don't know. We're, I think we're probably coming up on 30 years in publishing, probably. Yeah, yeah. So now as a publisher, uh, how many manuscripts land on your desk in a year, would you say? We get most likely uh, around 100 submissions every year. Yeah. And yeah. so I don't read all of them. Some yeah. of them go to uh, Paul Vermeersch, who is my senior editor, and he runs our Buck Writer imprint. Mm -hmm. um, but anything that's nonfiction, anything that's Hamilton oriented, that all comes to me. Right. Um, so, but it's it's a lot, and we only do about um, fourteen books a year. So, unfortunately, it's a a fair number of rejection letters. But. Yes. So, Noel, of all those manuscripts that land on your desk, what really stands out for you like what makes one jump out at you so okay for 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 me specifically yes i'm looking for a few things i want somebody who has a story to tell that nobody else can tell yeah so i want a really strong and individual writer's voice yeah and i want some passion about what they're writing about yeah. um and i've actually worked with people who have I've, I've explained to them don't worry about the spelling we yeah. can help you with spelling but we can't help you tell a story right so it's it's that voice it's the it's the the story that has to be told it's the passion like that will come off the page and we can smooth out writing as long as you can tell the story and you actually have to be able to finish the manuscript that's a big part yeah and do you know right away noel no no Oftentimes I'll start a book and I'll be wondering, you know, and because we often ask for samples yeah. and I'll hit a sample and I'll be like, some of the sample I like and some of the sample I don't like, mm -hmm. which is more the writer's voice. And if the part that I don't like is what they're going to write like most of the time, it's not a good fit for me because I'm not going to make you change your voice. You don't want to change that much of your writing. Then I'm a bad fit. But if this is just a small section where you kind of wandered off topic, then then I, I I can do something with it. I just I then I ask for a full manuscript to see what's happening. Right, right. 
And of your 30 years in the industry, do you have a favorite moment? I know it's hard to pick, but just something that really stands out for you as an incredible experience. I would have to say um, that when we won the Governor General's Award for Poetry, yeah. and I got to introduce my poet, who was Richard Harrison, and is a lovely man, and actually has been publishing with the press since before I joined it. Yeah. So it was it was wonderful to see somebody like him win it, to actually stand up in front of everybody and then introduce Richard. That was pretty spectacular. Oh. <laughs> And this question, Noelle, I'd like to kind of divide it into before COVID and then a mid COVID kind of like what we are right now. So can you paint a picture for us of what it's like to be an indie publisher before COVID? So before COVID, um, being an indie publisher, it's, a, it's, it's interesting. You're working with really smart people. Yeah. A lot of the people you work with in the industry are really smart and dedicated people, mm -hmm. um, but it is an uphill battle. Yes. We just don't have the money that yeah. the multinationals do. So you're yeah. always trying to sneak your author in there, get them in front of people, um, you know, get them into the reading series, get them onto the bookstore shelves. And if people will just read the books, you know, they'll love them. Yes. But it's just getting people to pay attention is a lot of work. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, it still is. And in some ways, it's worse during COVID because there's just so much in the news and so much on people's minds. Right. But we're still producing fabulous books. So. Yes, yes. And um, before we went on air, you were talking about how, you know, amid COVID, people are reading. They did. And I mean, one of the wonderful things about books is that they are you do them alone. You read alone mostly, right? Yes. Yeah. So, and they're an escape and yeah. they're a balm and they can be entertainment and they can challenge you. Like they can be just about anything you need. There's a book for anything you need. Mm -hmm. um, so during COVID, book sales actually went up. Yeah. But they were for a lot for the books that were already out there. Yeah. So older titles, people were picking them up very, very quickly. But launching a new book and getting people to know about that book was much harder. Mm -hmm. But it was kind of nice to see after the first initial shock where everybody was like, what's going on? And the bookstores closed and then found their feet. And I have to say that independent bookstores did a brilliant job of very quickly figuring out how to get books to people. Yeah. Like I knew friends who were literally walking like bags of books over to people, delivering them on bicycles. It was yeah. amazing to see. So they got the books out there. But what they found was that people were buying really unusual books. Really? Yeah. Hmm. They, they would they would go through their online things and they would just be like I've heard of this one I'll, I'm going to try it now yeah oh fantastic now I also understand that with COVID there was a little bit of a silver lining in that um the heritage fund injected some money into the to the book industry uh was this were you able to benefit from this I, and I believe it was just a one-time 10 million dollar injection that went in yeah, um, a lot of us who are already in the funding uh, in, the, in the funding system, yes. we did get that money and it was sort of given to us based on where we were in the funding programs, Right. Um, which was great because in the first sort of shutdown in spring, especially when the bookstore shut down and then Indigo returned a lot of books because they were actually closing stores. Yeah. We got books we hadn't seen in six or seven years that suddenly were returned. Oh, um, yes. The money from Heritage really smoothed that section out. So yeah. that made it possible for us to just kind of weather that storm yeah. um, and, and, and keep everybody carefully and, and slowly working away and not put a lot of stress on, on the different presses. Well, maybe some of the presses. For us, we felt it took a lot of the stress off. Oh, that's good. Now, Noelle, is this a one-time cash injection, or do you know is is there going to be more support so far, from the government? One time only. We haven't heard. I haven't heard anything about it continuing. Mm -hmm. So, some of the other supports, like the uh, the wage subsidies, they encouraged a lot of the presses, especially the larger ones, to take advantage of that. And that's you know that's still ongoing. 
Yeah. So those kinds of things were still there, but that one time kind of payout to just kind of help people keep the lights on. Yes. I think that was, I think that may be it. Oh, I'll cross my fingers that it won't be. <laughs> Definitely. Um, also during COVID, I've, I've noticed that a lot of um, publishers got very creative with their with their book launches. What did uh, Well Suck and Win do to launch books during COVID and still during COVID? Well, and I mean, we're, we we took a little while to see what everybody was doing. Yep. And then like everybody else, we moved online. Yeah. Um, and what we found is is readings are good and people enjoy them. Yeah. Um, we often partner it with sort of a sale or, um, you know, a few other things. We're not too creative with our launches because we found that, especially with the poetry, what people really want to do is hear the, hear the readers. They want to hear the poets read their words. Yes. And that's kind of it. So we tend to keep it a sort of more celebratory. With one of our nonfiction events, we um, had a couple of um, videos from other people talking about how much they loved the book. Yeah. We had a, a Q and A between her and a and a, um, um, a local journalist, and that went really, really well. But because it was a nonfiction book, it was a harder one to read from a long periods. So that worked nicely for us. And I've seen other people are doing fabulous things as well. Yeah. Yeah. Where do you see the book industry going in twenty twenty two, Noel? I'm really hesitant to kind of look too far because I keep yeah. saying the next season, we're going to have a launch again. We're going to be in person yeah. celebrating. And I've been wrong so many times now <laughs> that I'm a little hesitant, but I'm really hoping yes. by spring 2022, we can at least start having launches in person again, right? Yeah. That we can gather and celebrate the books. Yeah. Because people really, really miss that part. Um, but I think the industry is strong. I think it'll it's resilient. The writers are are you know still writing and they have even more stories to tell. Yes. Yes, I think for creatives it's been an incredibly um, productive season. <laughs> I found that we've seen more submissions from last year than unusual, yeah. but some people um, haven't been able to write at all, especially unfortunately if they were parents with small children who were homeschooled. Right. Yeah. That really took um, took up so much time. So so it's a very different mix of manuscripts, but quite a few of them. So I think a lot of people took the time and said, now I'm going to finish that book. Yeah. And what about content wise? Have you do you notice a big shift in content as well? Our themes, I should say. Not yet. I yeah. think all my COVID books are coming next year. <laughs> yeah. I think a lot of people would start the manuscript. And it will, it, it's, it's in there. Um, I have, actually, I do have a fabulous nonfiction book coming from Kit Dobson um, next spring, which okay. will specifically deal with COVID oh. um, because it, and in, in other ways, but as he, he had been writing it and then had literally been in Spain when everything shut down. Oh. And he had to get back out, get to Calgary. And so that, you know, so that really shook how he was writing his book. So that's weaving through there. And I, it is actually showing up in one of my last essay collections coming out this year from Tim Bowling. Um, we actually put him put in a little, because one of the essays is actually about solitude. So he felt maybe I should say that I still like solitude, even though COVID hit. Yeah. So we yeah. put a little introduction in to explain that, no, this still holds true. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's starting to already work its way in, but I think that the really you'll see a lot more of them in 2022. Okay, but what about immediately? What do you have coming out um, this fall? We have really, we have fabulous mix of books this fall. Um, we have a wonderful literary thriller from Michelle Berry. Mm -hmm. And this is interesting because this one actually has another one of those pivotal events um, sort of happening around it. She wrote it shortly after 9-11. Okay. And, uh, and it's a murder that happens literally as the, the towers are falling. Oh. <laughs> and her agent said, way too soon, because it came out a couple of years after. And the publishers were like, no, 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 we can't publish this. It's too soon. It's too traumatic. 
so we're bringing it out this fall, which is the Whoa. 20 year anniversary. And it's really fascinating to see how that complete world shift that happened there and was yeah. playing out in her book, how it's sort of echoing right now. Like, how yeah. do you reconnect with reality with everything that's happened around you? Or not with reality, but with sort of the everyday. Yeah. Ooh, so I've got I'm that one. I'm but intrigued. A lovely, yeah, it's, it's a really good one. And it's, it's a page turner. It's Michelle. So she's yeah. a fabulous writer. Um, I have a lovely memoir from Ralph Ben Murgy, mm -hmm. who many people may remember from CBC days. Mm -hmm. um, it's called I Thought He Was Dead. Um, and it's it, Ralph is a wonderful storyteller and he's very funny. And he's had a couple brushes with cancer. He's had a brush with a heart attack and he's had to reinvent himself. And a lot of it is about finding a new way and what it's like to, to kind of fall from sort of the pinnacles of media in, in Canada to just being a normal guy. Okay. So that one is good. Really, really smart, creative short stories from Daniel Tisdale. Mm -hmm. They're brilliant and very, um, he's really pushing the form in some of them um, and very filmic because he's also a filmmaker, right? So they're very, very beautifully visually written. A couple of spectacular poetry collections, one from Adrian de Leon, which is um, Barangay, which is about um, diaspora and it's about his Filipino gram it's Filipino grandmother mm. uh, and then Marguerite Pigeon is taking on the fashion industry in hers uh, the endless garment which is like a Dantean look at like the fashion industry it's absolutely brilliant yes um, and then we have again Tim Bowling with his essays mm -hmm. um, and I honestly I think Tim Bowling is one of the finest stylists in Canada he's just a beautiful beautiful writer um, and he's coming out and then I have a debut memoir from uh, Margaret Nowachek, who is a local writer, um, and she's writing about her experiences as um, a geneticist at McMaster Hospital, and also as a woman in medicine, and also as somebody who struggles with mental health. Wow! So it's it's a really it's a really strong season. I I would say it sounds amazing, and and I think. That's one of the wonderful things I think about the indie presses is the quality of books that that come from these presses like they're just incredible. We get books, I mean, and it's it's I've been seeing it more and more the quality of the writing that comes to us. It's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. It's just always amazing to me and I'm just really happy that people trust us with these stories. Yes. Um, and. Uh, our goal is always to get as many people to read them as possible. Yeah, like I must admit, as a reader, I have totally fallen in love with the indie presses and what and what you folks put out like incredible, just incredible. I, I think that independent presses in Canada publish some of the best books out there. Yes. But what they often are, are not the most marketable. Yeah. So that's part of the reason why they come to us because a lot of the, the, the multinationals are looking for books that are well-written, like they're not looking for poorly written books, but they're also looking for books they can sell. Yeah. And, you know, I'm taking on manuscripts of poetry where, you know, she's setting it in a department store and, and she has ghost spirit guides taking on the fashion industry. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. it's brilliant. Like this it totally. is like nothing I've ever read. It's gonna be hard to sell. Like, how do you how do you pitch that book? Once you read it, you know, it's brilliant, but it's, it's getting people to say that sounds fascinating. It's not easy to market. No. Yeah. So, I mean, that's uh, got to be one of the biggest challenges. How, like, how do you it's it's believing in what you're putting out there and try. Yeah. And getting it into all of those hands. Yeah. Oh. Well, I am a, a big fan and an of of what of what you do, Noel, and all and all of our uh, small presses in Canada, like it's it's incredible, incredible. Um, uh, before before we leave, um, is there anything else that you would like to tell our viewers out there, Noel, about being an indie publisher? I would just encourage people to read. To look for the indie books yeah. and to one of the things i say is if you can find an editor whose taste you like then just follow them right yeah. 
yeah, you know, and just and just read widely um, amongst the books that are coming out. And a great, and there's lots of places to look for them. One of my favorites is All Lit Up, which is yeah. run by the Literary Press Group. But they often have really great interviews and profiles of 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 books that you probably won't hear about um, anywhere else. But they're brilliant. So, you know, oh. I would encourage people to read diversely, um, not just you know by writers, but by publisher. Thank you. A big, big, big thank you, Noelle Allen, publisher and owner of Walsack and Wynn. Thank you for giving us an overview of, of publishing in Canada. Really appreciate your time. You're welcome. It was lovely to chat. And I will put, it was my pleasure, I will put links down below in the description box to Walsack and Wynn's uh, website. So viewers can go there. You've told us about so many great books that are coming out this fall. So they can go to your website, have a peek, order from their local bookstores. And uh, I'll also put a link down below to all it up as well. Keep people, yes. in the, keep, people, keep people in the loop. And hopefully I'll be able to talk tomorrow. <laughs> so thank you, thank you, thank you, Noelle. I appreciate it. And goodbye, everyone. Thank you for watching.